Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Sumit Bakshi. In this video, I am going to talk about convenience sampling. This video is first part in the series of non-probability sampling, in which I am going to cover what is convenience sampling, when to use convenience sampling. I will discuss an example. Then I will discuss some disadvantages and advantages of convenience sampling. And at the end, I will give few recommendations to researcher. So let's start with what is convenience sampling. Convenience sampling is type of known probability sampling method. In this, samples are drawn from population based on convenience or opportunity. Samples drawn here are readily available. Easily available elements of population are selected as sample. It means samples are selected because they are close to hand, not by some randomness. That is why convenience sampling is also known as accidental sampling, grab sampling, chunk sampling, haphazard sampling, or sometimes opportunity sampling. Each element in the population has known non-zero chance of being selected as samples are not selected randomly. Now, next important thing to discuss here is when to use convenience sampling. Here, word convenience is many times misinterpreted. Convenience does not mean it is to ease task of researcher. Rather here convenience means researcher is unable to select samples through probability sampling due to some specific reasons. When researcher does not have complete list of target population in hand or sometimes researcher does not have the opportunity to select samples randomly due to time, cost, traveling restrictions. To give you more clarity, let me discuss one example of convenient sampling. Example is a researcher wants to survey opinion of teachers about online teaching during COVID. Now, in this research problem, target population is unknown or I can say not defined as teachers across the world experienced online teaching due to COVID pandemic. Also, there can be situation that there will be no travel restrictions due to COVID. In this situation, it is best practice to select samples through convenient sampling. Means researcher will collect data from teachers who are close to hand, who are easily accessible. Maybe from his own institute or from other institute located nearby and approachable to the researcher. So in this example, this is researcher and these are teachers close to researcher. This orange boundary shows that these teachers are accessible to researcher conveniently and easily. There are many drawbacks of convenient sampling. Samples are not true representative of population due to the way sample is selected. It is difficult to replicate results found through convenient sampling because selected sample is small chunk of whole population. That is why it is also known as chunk sampling. Chunk means small portion of population. It is hard to generalize findings to target population in case of convenient sampling. In convenient sampling, samples are connected to each other due to technique of selection. This interferes with many statistical analysis as samples selected are non-random. This way, results can be misleading. This method is considered as unreliable method because samples are not obtained in a scientific way as we do in probability sampling techniques. Selection of samples can be biased due to non-randomness. There are few advantages also. It is easy to get sample. Participants are easily available. It is cheaper in comparison to other methods. It is less time consuming. It does not need much efforts on the part of researcher for sample selection. Convenient sampling is useful for quick studies like pilot testing. As I mentioned earlier, convenient sampling is not used for convenience of researcher. So the first recommendation for researchers is use probability sampling wherever possible. Even if researcher use convenient sampling, Rather than relying on only one sample, researcher can select multiple samples to replicate findings. Researcher can repeat study to check whether you get similar result. If researcher is taking large samples, he or she can compare results of one half of the data to another half. That's all with this video. Thank you. 
If you find this video helpful, please press like button and subscribe to Dr. Sumit Bakshi. Share your feedback in the comment section below and don't forget to watch sampling playlist. Link I will give in the description box below. Thank you.